Um, what up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report. Today, I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Schultz. Today, we're going to be discussing the next decade of Marvel. As you already know, Mr. Kevin Feige is going on a retreat with his parliament <laughs> to discuss the next 10 years of the MCU. Brian, there's some that say that Kevin Feige one day will leave the MCU. I disagree. Not to say that this is an indication that he's going to stay for the next 10 or 20 years or whatever. But this certainly gives those who are fearful of that happening a sigh of relief. But um, who knows? He could be planning his exit to keep this machine going. But the next 10 years of Marvel, there's a lot, a lot of stuff going on. Um, we can sort of, I guess, predict the next 10 years based on the films that are coming out now and what those storylines will lead to. Um, have we had some, we've had some delays, right? With Marvel um, um, films as of, as of late, right? It's some, some recent news. Well, I think the whole schedule has been delayed because of the pandemic, right? So they've had a little extra time to, to get to this stage just by virtue of the fact that we're seeing all these films 12 to 18 months later than they originally intended. Yeah. You know, you, you're mentioning the, the recent swap. They they kept the same release dates, but they traded Ant-Man 3. It's going to come out early in 2023. The Marvels, the Captain Marvel sequel, is going to come out in the summer of 2023. You know, no details on why exactly they made the flip, but they did. That was that came out this past week. But gotta love Kevin Feige with the CinemaCon presentation. And then he just kind of drops at the end. I'm leaving right from here to go to the retreat to plan mm. the next decade. <laughs> like he, he didn't have to say that. He just kind of <laughs> floated that out there. And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, what would you do if you were, I don't, who knows where this retreat is, right? It's probably, it probably is at like that cabin that Wanda's hiding out in with the, with mm -hmm. the dark hole. That's probably where they go, right? Because they don't want anyone around. But like, you imagine being like in an airport or like a, I mean, sure they fly private, but like you're at yeah. an airport and all of a sudden you see like Kevin Feige with his baseball cap and like all his team walk, I'll lose my mind. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's one dude, because <laughs> I don't get starstruck. But if I saw Kevin Feige on the beach chilling with his family, if I had the, the honor, I'd be like, hey, I got to say hello, man. I got to say, I know with your family and, you. and all, yeah, but I got to say hello. Um, yeah, I definitely thank him for making these years like something we thought would never happen live action and be this good based off of what we've seen in the past because they were horrendous. Um even though I still I, I still like Dolph Lundgren as the Punisher. He wasn't that bad. I don't think Thomas Jane was that bad either. Is that bad to say? Lundgren's a bigger guy, but I think both of them played it serious and pretty dark. I mean, yeah, that's a whole tangent, but no, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so with the next decade of Marvel, I'm pretty sure what's going to be talked about at that retreat is Mr. John Watts. Um, not being the guy that will be introducing the Fantastic Four. That, to me, says that we're really not too far into that project. Like, we're not even in the first inning. You know, we're like a week before the game. So... And then I'm sure X-Men is going to be talked about. 
what do you think, Brian? On what is it that you're, uh, you 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 think that Kevin Feige is going to be planning for, and, and the Parliament not going to be planning for for the next ten years? Mm-hmm. I mean, because we have movies coming out up until twenty twenty three, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, through twenty twenty three. Yeah. Okay. Quickly on the John Watts news, which which broke really recently. So obviously he 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 did the, the Tom Holland trilogy, all critically acclaimed, massive box office success, culminating with No Way Home. He was announced as the director for the Fantastic Four reboot under Disney and Marvel Studios, and it came out that he's stepping away from the director's seat. Now it does not seem by all reports that this is the classic creative differences or that he was fired. It sounds like burnout. It just sounds yeah, like yeah. he's been doing, you know, Spider-Man, 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 huge productions dating back to 2016, I think is when they entered production on Homecoming. Yeah. And so he's just like, I need a break, man. I can't do another scale project like this right now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, It made me think that like, you're going to see him be reassigned like to another Maybe he gets X Men. Like he, I just that he would get another big project when his batteries are recharged. Charged, but it yeah. also tells me now you're right. It does suggest they they definitely don't have a script. They don't have a cast. But it does suggest to me they have a timetable because they're yeah. not waiting for Watts to kind of get a vacation. They're like we got to move on the existing timeline. And yeah. find someone else. That I did think was a little bit interesting in the story that they're not like just delay. I mean, at this point, they didn't commit to a real. They didn't really commit to a true release date. They just said it's coming, right? They just teased yeah. it. Yeah. So, my my biggest thing, and I don't know what you think about this. I th- I rarely think that Kevin Feige says stuff by accident. And so, the way I've felt throughout Phase Four and this Disney Plus introduction. It's kind of like it's kind of like the intermission of the grand show. It's like we had the show from Iron Man One to Avengers Endgame. And all of that, those 22 movies was like act one, sort of. I know it's multiple phases, but it became this giant first act of the MCU. And now we're kind of, we're being entertained by this potpourri of TV experimentation. And we got some different films. We're introducing some new characters. We're trying a few new things, but there isn't the same degree of singular purpose that we had with the Infinity Saga. I feel like him saying, I'm planning the next decade is his way of saying, two is coming like this is the real act like we're going to take the information that we learned in act one and all this stuff that we're playing around with right now some of which is working some of which hasn't worked as well Mm -hmm. but take all that and now we're gonna lay out our big tracks and that's what we're going to bring to you you know next disney event next d23 or next cinema I just don't think it's an accident that he said, he could have just said, I'm going to a retreat with the parliament. He could have just said, he said the next decade. I just don't think that was an accident. That's what yeah, it felt yeah. like to me. Yeah. I don't know what you think yeah. about that, but. No, no, I, I, I agree. I agree. Um, Cause when you think about the current MCU, sure we can say secret wars is coming, right? But I think perhaps that this retreat is going to be how do we get to Secret Wars? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know if we get that planned out because Secret Wars is big. Yeah. You got to really define the parameters of how all this is going to work. Um, man, I would love to be in that room, man. As a waiter, I don't. I, I don't know. Some somebody just sitting there, just listening to that conversation. But um, but 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 let's go through it. So you hit on it. Secret Wars definitely has to be one of the agenda items. Yeah. X Men we know is one of the agenda items. Fantastic Four we know is one of the agenda items. Um, and then I think it's like there's like 
linkages beyond that, right? It's like, is there a true Avengers 5 out there? We've kind of had all these movies where there's two Avengers and a couple of, and is there, you know, is it Secret Wars? Like, and who gets to be invited to that party? Like, do you want to keep the X-Men separate? Do you want X-Men versus Avengers? Like how much crossover do you actually want given the library is now many fold bigger? I think the other, other thing I would expect them to sort out with more definition is this whole, you know, are they or aren't they on sort of the R-rated stuff? Like, are we doing, you know, are we taking the, you know, Netflix series? Are we really going to build some of those streets level, you know, heroes and characters into something else that we can then cross back into the film? It's just a lot more moving pieces than there were 15 years ago. I was ago. just thinking that. I was just thinking that. It, it's, 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 it's a lot. And... The purpose of the multiverse and what transpired at the end of Loki is to make a lot of these things possible. To not have to explain, oh, where were you guys when this was happening? Maybe this is not happening in this reality. This is happening somewhere else or whatever the case may be. So, yeah, those things are definitely on the agenda. Um, and I don't think it's fantastic when i say fantastic for an x-men i don't mean marvel always does a good job of like making sure that first product that first film is pretty good but in the decade planning i think a lot of it's going to be the multi-part piece of that right it's, it's not fantastic for one it's fantastic for one two and three and okay maybe fantastic for three isn't really fantastic for three maybe it's avengers five like that's what I mean. Like, I think it's going to be multiple installations of these different franchises and where they want them to intersect. I mean, a potentially huge schedule um, that they could be could be announcing relative to even now they're doing, what do they do? Usually about three films a year, maybe sometimes four. Like, it wouldn't shock me if they went for five plus a year in some of these years that they're going to lay out. It's fantastic for a difficult thing to pull off yes i think they're they're clearly going to be hampered by the the previous iterations you know the you know if you must if the, the average moviegoer is not us right the average moviegoer is going to be like wait didn't they try this before and it stunk why did i care like why should i care so you gotta you gotta undo and and, and like it's different than, you know, you referenced some of the silliness of Marvel way, way back, right? That was far enough in the past that like, you know, Cap like Chris Evans didn't bear the burden of the goofy Captain America film yeah. that they tried for TV, right? Like that's too far apart. But this was like 2015 was the fantastic, I heard it, there was an interview with Jamie Bell the other day. Or no, what was he on? He was on, um, was he on the Colbert? Somebody was asking him about, given the success of the genre, should people now go back and rethink and revisit his Fantastic Four movie? And he literally goes, no, it was a <laughs> failure. Save your time, save your money. So that's the latest reminder to everyone mm. about the state of Fantastic Four. So it is hard. And I think it's also hard because they're old characters. You know, you got to update the first family and make it relevant and fun, but capture the essence of their squabbles and their heroism. It's They're not the easiest characters to write. Do you think that uh, has something to do with John Watt's decision uh, to take a break? I just think with that, I think it's, like I said, I think it had more to do with it's a two year commitment to do one of these films, right? From the standpoint of writing, casting, shooting, post, promotion, release. So I can't totally blame him. I mean, like, you know, you, you look at like the Russos went through it, mm. but if you look at the timeline from when they came into the MCU for Winter Soldier in 2013, and when they left Endgame in 2019, that's about the same length of time as John Watts just put in for the Spider-Man trilogy. And the Russos obviously have been doing good stuff after, but they've definitely stepped away from the genre as well. So I think, I think it's just more that. I don't think it's that he was afraid of 
of the challenge of Fantastic Four. So, yeah. but I also don't think Marvel is totally settled on what they want that to be yet. Part of what they're working on this week. Yeah, but they yeah. better get it right because I, I do think like if Marvel blows one of these, it's a big, it's a much higher profile setback. Of course. Right? Like, I, I, you know, like, you can blame it on Fox. You can blame it on prior, like, but if you step up to the plate and your Fantastic Four isn't any better than Josh Tranks or isn't any better than Tim Stories, three strikes, you're out, man. It's going to be a while before we see Fantastic Four again. I mean, and the, 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 the shame of it all would be that, you know, Fantastic Four has history with um, Galactus, mm-hmm. um, and the Fantastic Four get into weird stuff, man. So it could be interesting, but it's also a tough thing to do. I think in order for Fantastic Four to work is you have to go out there a little bit um, into the stuff that Reed Richard gets himself into in a family uh, into, uh, and him being able to talk that smart talk and have us enjoy those moments because that's what he's known for, yeah. right? And then Fantastic Four, that connection with Doom. I was just about to say, I think if you want to make Fantastic Four work, I would actually start with Doom and go back. Exactly. That'd be my, like, get Doom right, I think you can get the four right. That's my two Do you do Doom movies? Or you do Doom movies, or I, I don't know about doing actual shows. How do you feel about that? If they would, if they decided to I, do a Doom yeah. show. Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess I shouldn't split hairs because Kang was obviously introduced on TV and it's going to move to the big screen. But I, I prefer Doom be kept higher profile and not overused. But I'm just saying, if you nail that casting and you nail that portrayal, I think it does actually make your job easier for the Fantastic Four in a way that like, if you get a decent Fantastic Four, but you have a bad doom, I don't know that that movie is going to really work to be quite honest. Do you cast an older gentleman or a young, if you, cause my fear is that, oh, let's modernize it. Let's get a younger cat, a younger cast or. You, you always, you, what you fear is, is you fear the Jesse Eisenberg of it all. Oh, comes yeah. to doom. That's what you really fear. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> that's, they they, they that's can't. You... They can't. They, <laughs> that won't they happen. Can't. They can't. Um, and we've talked about who we were cast for 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 Doom. Henry Cavill was one of them. It was. Um, I that's think, our I like. Think... I think that's our like. That's our curveball candidate because he's never really played a villain. Yeah. yeah. Except in Fallout, but we think he. But we think he's got it in him. Do it. It'll be a tough thing, Brian. It won't be easy. It'll be different, and a lot of curiosity would be set in. But he would have to pull a do. He would have to pull a pull off a hell of a performance in order um, to convince me uh, of, a, of, of him being doomed. Very interesting. Um. Anything else, Brian, um, regarding the next decade of Marvel? No, like I said, it just puts me on the lookout for sometime in twenty in 2023 that what we what will be delivered to us when they give us those presentations with the timelines on the calendars will be a much more, like I said, it'll be sort of a very thematic presentation, something where you can really connect across and sort of see like, okay, I can see where they're sort of aiming, aiming the ship. And that's mm-hmm. gonna be super cool. Cause right now, like I said, we got a lot of fun things on the board, but I don't think we can definitively say how this is all gonna really connect. It's more like a play, it's more like a sandbox and we're kind of just yeah. getting different pieces. That next one I think is really gonna focus us in. And I think you know, obviously it's gonna, it, it'll be exciting, but yeah, yeah. I think we'll kind of know where the big, the big cards are being played, so. Yeah. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think will be uh, the fruit of that retreat. 
what what projects or what characters you think um will be a topic in those conversations that will be had um honestly for me i i hope the conversation of galactus begins because although galactus is often you know connected with fantastic four i think you can do a galactus silver surfer movie without having any connection to anything um, um at least not now and do it on its own i think for me anyway i i, I would love to see a silver surfer film um what, what what movie would you love to see brian i think you hit on it i think marvel does a really good job the way they tease it is through the is through the titles. We remember, if you think back to when they unveiled, you know, some of the cap like the, the they were unveiling the last phase, getting ready for Endgame, and like they just put the titles up, title cards. It was like Captain America, Civil War, and you knew what the inspiration was going to be. I didn't, you didn't need to tell me anymore. We knew what the yeah, inspiration yeah. was, and then they put like Avengers, Infinity War. Right, originally it was Infinity War they Part One and Two. They didn't two, put yeah, Endgame yeah. in until later, so. My expectation is they will use the title to clue you in to some of those characters like Galactus, like the Silver Surfer. You'll kind of know who's coming. Yeah. Uh, or they'll make a Doom reference, something that will let you know who's waiting in the wings. And that'll be super duper exciting. But I'm with you. I think the, the linkage between Fantastic Four and then ultimately leading hopefully to, to Galactus, Silver Surfer, something cosmic and on even a grander scale than what Thanos was able to provide. I mean, that's, that's, the, that's the logical extension. And I think <laughs> something I really hope we see done right in our lifetime <laughs> so we can erase that cloud from our, our memory. But, Let me ask you this before we sign off. Do you think Adam Warlock will survive Guardians of the Galaxy 3? <laughs> you, mean, uh, you mean this iteration of Adam Warlock? Yes. I'm not convinced that the Will Poulter version is going to be the one for the next 10 years, but... In the multiverse, you can obviously change that. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of the next 10 years of the, the Marvel Cinematic Universe and what it will bring to us. Uh, I'm your host, Pablo. Joining me as always, Mr. Brian Schultz. Remember to hit that like and subscribe button and share with your friends. We really appreciate it. And we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gen Report.